Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I've continued work on the TRAPPIST-1 system. I've sort of fixed the floating space center problem. It's got some land under it, uh, but not the, not the land that we're used to. If you can see right here, you can sort of see that the rest of the land that we're used to, the sort of uh, drier area that's a rectangle, is underwater right now. So, at least we have some actual land underneath the space center, but it's not quite right. And, but maybe I'll just work with this and create a bridge over here. But this is uh, now TRAPPIST-1E. I decided to go with the fact that the fourth planet seems to be the one that is most habitable, potentially having liquid water and everything. And I've, well, I'll show you how I've configured the system. So let me go to the tracking station, but I just wanted to show you the state of the Space Center. Not ideal, not ideal, uh, but uh, potentially workable at least compared to what it was before, which was floating in midair. I've decided to add uh, volumetric clouds uh, just for looks, but ultimately the patch I've made for the TRAPPIST-1 system is just a configuration file. All you'll need, and I'll put the configuration file in the video description, uh, all you really need is Copernicus and Module Manager, and then you can have the TRAPPIST-1 system. That's it. It'll all have the textures of the stock system, which may be a plus or a minus depending on your point of view, uh, but it certainly makes the system more compatible with a whole bunch of other things. Now, I previously made a video about why the TRAPPIST-1 system is not a good idea for stuff, uh, right? Uh, because all the planets are samey. That, however, does not mean that it's not an interesting place for some experiments. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, one of the experiments is trying to use Principia with it. So we have n-body physics, ladies and gentlemen and body physics and the little worlds can crash into each other. Now, we know that the TRAPPIST-1 system by default is stable, so that's not a big issue. The problem is the moons of Joule or some of the other moons like Moon and Minmus around Kerbin. And I've already decided that there's no way Joule is going to be able to have five moons. They're just going to interfere with each other and slingshot them out or uh, otherwise cause havoc. I decided to simulate this in Universe Sandbox 2, and perhaps we should take a look at that. Okay, so here is the TRAPPIST-1 system in Universe Sandbox 2. We should probably slow this down a little bit. And the music's a little bit for forceful, sorry about that. But what we're interested in is TRAPPIST-1G, which is what we're going to have as Jewel. So, I'm going to place Laith, Val, and Hilo in their locations, but I'm just going to use Enceladus to simulate them. So, add. We're going to have some Enceladuses. Because otherwise I don't have any actual version of Laith, Val, or Tylo. And it's important to note that with stuff like the Roche limit, the density, the fact that I haven't changed the density of Laith, Val, or Tylo, I haven't changed their size at all. And since they're very dense, they're more resistant to the Roche limit. In other words, they can be closer in to Jewel without breaking apart. So that's a positive, and I'm just going to leave that be for now. Now, uh, this is measuring from the center and a radius. So there's a semi-major axis. And what I have is I have Leith at 23,000 kilometers. So we'll put one right there. I have Val at 46,000, so let's say right about there, and I have Tylo at 92,000. Too far and it'll actually just escape, so there's a limit. And because of the gravitational interactions between the moons, uh, it has to be much lower than that limit, otherwise it'll ultimately become elongated and flung out. So 92,000. So we have three. now. This could be sensitive to the initial conditions. In other words, where exactly I placed the three, right now they're almost in line, but it could be sensitive to the fact that whether they're in line or opposite each other, because it's sort of a chaotic system and body physics tends to be. So if we see, we're just gonna take a look here. Oh, I'd like to see what we can do about the view here. Orbits, that's what we want to see. Okay. 
and we'll speed it up a little bit. But you can see because of... Oh, uh, uh, it seems to be having trouble with this one. Um, that one seems to be breaking apart, but again... The Roche limit here is nicer for worlds that have higher density. Now, this Enceladus is getting seriously distorted. That's Tylo. And now it's sort of become more of a comet. But this is just with the regular Enceladuses. The other thing we could try is if they have greater density. And then maybe the inner Enceladus won't be quite so susceptible. And the outer Enceladus, the Tylo one, will have more mass. And won't be doing what it's doing. It's gonna go on escape now there. Okay, so let me try it again. And we'll place them a little bit. We'll increase their density. But this is one way to test your n-body physics systems without going into Principia, because in Principia it's got to take a while. Let me say that. And 46 and 92. But we're going to change their densities now. This is the first use I've gotten out of Universe Sandbox in a long time, let me tell you. Okay, now the densities of the worlds in KSP is crazy. Let's go with 40. Don't ask what the actual densities are. Um, the actual densities are too crazy. 40 is still pretty crazy. Earth is at 5. But Enceladus itself was way too low. Okay, so they're at 40 right now. Oh, okay, we're, we're simulating too fast and we don't have the little overview. Okay. Still, Tylo's gonna end up like that. It's gonna end up on escape. Leif and Val remain stable though, relatively speaking. Well, anyway, that's Universe Sandbox's opinion. <laughs> you can see why we couldn't have Bop or Paul, for sure. Um, yeah. But let's see what actually happens in Kerbin, uh, in KSP, and maybe Principia has a different opinion. Okay, so back here, uh, we're going to have their trails. The problem is the trails aren't jewel centric and I don't know in this view how to make them jewel centric. We can make them sun centric or Kerbin centric, but we can't make them jewel centric. So we're just gonna see whether something gets flown off. Or Principia says that something's collided with something else. Let's see, maybe I can display patch conics? No, that only works for the planets rather than the moons. Oh, um, they're fading. Let's take a look at Tylo. It, it is getting more and more comedy, right? It's doing exactly what Universe Sandbox 2 said it would do. And I think it's already become a new little planet. <laughs> um, are these two okay? So anyway, this is this is why I put Principia in, to see whether the system is actually stable with some moons. And this could be a long-term fascination for us.
it also makes transferring to the various locations much more interesting. Not that it isn't already interesting, mind you. Let's take a look at Transfer Window Planner. So the Trappist 1 system has many features. The most known feature is it's just chock full of worlds about the size of Earth. And, you know, a few of them could potentially have some life. And the reason I'm interested in it is because we could possibly put Kerbals there legitimately, right? Uh, having Kerbals in real solar system is jarring because we expect humans in real solar system. And so people go like, well, if only we could convert the Kerbals into humans, right? Uh, but if we have a real solar system, the Trappist one is a real solar system. Uh, well, no, this is a real system. It's not a solar system. Solar, solar is specific to Sol, our star. But it's a real system, real star system. And the Kerbals could be there. I mean, uh, the Kerbals could be there. I also have a side uh, theory that the way we look at Kerbals is actually their chibi form. I just came up with that yesterday. Uh, chibi form being the smaller form that was used in older games, uh, especially pixel art games. See, well, right now you also have pixel art games like uh, my mind right. Stardew Valley was what I was thinking of. So basically, that it's their chibi form that uh, we see, and they're actually normal sized. But that's a whole other thing. So yeah, that's why I'm interested in Trappist system because the Kerbal uh, the Kerbals could be there. It could be fine for the Kerbals to have a world called Kerbin in the Trappist system and uh, Trappist 1E, which is what that is, would be their world. And that's why I think it'd be fun to play around with it. Uh, the reason why I was uh, uncertain about whether to propagate this to other people is that uh, the worlds didn't seem all that interesting. You know, there's no gas giant really. We've got one that looks like one with Jewel, but it is, shouldn't really be one. Anyway. Uh, the other interesting thing about the Trappist-1 system is that all the worlds are really close together. And the net result of that is that the transit time between the worlds is really short. Note, travel time, two days. That is not wrong. <laughs> that is not wrong. The travel time is really short like that because the orbits are really short. If you want a rough approximation of the travel time, you take half the orbit of your origin planet and then half the orbit of the destination planet and then average them. Uh, so you get the average of those two halves and that's a rough approximation for the travel time. And um, considering all these worlds revolve around their sun really, really fast, the travel times are really, really short. The delta, that doesn't help the delta V between them too much. Though uh, 3000 for eject, ejection and 2766 for insertion from uh, Kerbin to its nearest neighbor, Duna, which is now the third planet, uh, is not too bad. If we take a look at some of the other options, Kerbin to Moho, you can get there in a, in a little bit uh, less than two days. I bet the ejection and insertion is really harsh. It's basically Mercury level. I bet the problem with it is that Moho is now Earth-sized. So you're going to have a heck of a time trying to land on it or take off from it especially. So that's worrisome. And... Eve, uh, it's definitely more than Venus would take, so that's a little bit rough. On the bright side, Joule uh, is 4,000, which is less than Jupiter used to be, and so that's a little bit easier to get to. And I don't know why they have Joule here before Drez, but Drez is closer, and Drez is very mild, less than the delta V to get to Earth's moon. So that's nice, but the insertion delta V is harsh. And then Elu. Elu, Elu's just like that. Okay, so six days. The, the maximum time between these things is six days. So, and that's legit for the Trappist-1 system. Unfortunately, the Trappist-1 system is all very planar as well. These are, as far as I can tell, their actual inclination. Well, their actual inclination in which you would be tilted by 90 degrees. They're sort of uh, vertical in reference to their star's spin, I think. I don't know what it's in reference to, but anyway, with respect to each other, they have very little inclination. They're all very planar. So nothing too interesting in that. Um, th th again, there's a lot that's boring about them. Uh, I've tried to adjust the other moons like uh, Ike uh, to be stable, um, but I think I've lost Ike. Where's, where's Ike? It didn't have a message that I crashed into, Duna. 
I don't know what's happened to Ike. <laughs> Ike, Ike was supposed to be there. Uh, how, how, how's the moon in Minmus? Um, the moon's there. We might have lost Minmus. More work needs to be done on the stability of these moons, to be honest. I don't know what's happened to Minmus, but it didn't pop up with a message saying that Minmus crashed into something. So, hmm. Normally, Principia will pop up uh, with a uh, you've created an apocalypse message. So, I don't know what's happened to my other moons. Let me start a clean save and see if they're actually there at the start. Now, you can't, uh, if you add this into your install, if you add the system into your install, you have to have a clean save. It won't, uh, because it initializes the planets like that. Otherwise, you will not get them in the right place. And personally, uh, I would advise you not using Principia. <laughs> uh, okay, so we, we have the Moon and Minmus, but apparently we lost Minmus at some point. So this is why you can't have Principia. Um, but it's interesting to see what happens. And Ike was there, a fair distance away too, I might add. So let's see what happens to Ike over time. Well, we still don't get the orbits around here. We'll just have to visualize it. Oh, well, it very, very much gets more comety because of all the perturbations from the other planets, you see. It's, it, it ends up being its own world outside and then ultimately spins and crashes into Duna. I'm surprised Principia didn't give us a message about that. Is Minmus still there? Minmus is not, but I assume Minmus... Oh no, Minmus is. Okay, let's see what happens to Minmus. Mimis is way far out. Uh, Mimis is now just... I, I don't know, it's disappeared. I was focused on it. Oh, well, it's still there. It just... Principia doesn't like to show things sometimes. So it's still there. Well, it's in between the orbits of Kerbin and Drez. And it's hanging out there. So, that's Trappist-1 with Principia. Um, well, the, the rest of the system is fine. The, the, the actual planets, Trappist-1 with the planets is fine. I mean, it's a stable system, obviously, we know. Well, I mean, as stable as systems get, okay? Uh, the, eventually, bad things will happen, and who knows. But... If you put the moons around Kerbin, uh, Eve, Eve, Gilly, whatever happened to that? Let's just see what happens to Gilly. I'll start a fresh save. Yeah, the problem is it likes to fade them out and make them disappear, Principia does. I wish I could have a Eve-focused or Eve-centric view on this. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Gilly pretty much immediately leaves. Maybe I should put it closer in. I'll try and put uh, Ike and Gilly closer in, and maybe even Minmus closer in, but I don't think it's going to help. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know. Uh, really, we don't have to worry too much about the Roche limit, it's just that they get perturbed too much and ultimately smack into their host planet. So, anyway, those are other peculiarities of the Trappist-1 system. I am going to link it in the video description. Uh, you just put the folder, the Trappist-1 folder, into your game data folder. I didn't name it anything special, it's just called Trappist-1. And... Uh, you'll need Copernicus and Module Manager or any requirements of Copernicus to use it. And of course, I would recommend some sort of environmental visual enhancements. Any of the stock ones should theoretically work, 
um, as long as they scale properly. Of course, the world is a different size, but it looks like the volumetric clouds work, So and scatterer works fine. That was one reason why I didn't use one of the other packages. Uh, I had found two other Trappist-1 systems, but uh, they didn't have compatibility with scatterer and stuff like that because they were very old. Or maybe scatterer would work with them now, but I don't know. I did change the color of the sun, by the way, uh, to make it more red. And the sun is the right size as far as I know. So, yeah. With that, uh, that'll be in the video description. So, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.